audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. What is this cross that we're all called to bear? To bear the cross means one thing. It means deny yourself and put God first. So many chase after happiness at the expense of nearly everything else. Today, Pastor Greg Laurie says happiness ultimately comes from pursuing God. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be happy, but it's not by chasing happiness. You find it by putting God first in your life and following Him. This is the day when the lost are found. of life is determined by our focus. Do we focus on career more than family or family more than career? Do we focus more on pursuing goals or enjoying the journey? Some focus on happiness. It's their most important pursuit in life. And yet happiness isn't found through direct pursuit. Today on A New Beginning, Pastor Greg Laurie points out that happiness comes when we put God before ourselves, when His will becomes our will. That's our cross to bear. Jesus came to this earth to die for the sins of the world. But his disciples did not get that because it was lost in translation. Their hope and their belief was he was going to establish an earthly kingdom then and there. But before Christ would wear a crown, he would first have to bear a cross. Now, as we come to our text here in Mark chapter 8, his ministry in Galilee is coming to a close. This is a transitional moment in his ministry. And for the first time, he's going to speak very clearly and in great detail about why he has come. Let's look at our text. Mark chapter 8, verse 31. Then Jesus began to teach him that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and three days later, rise again. Notice the detail in those words. He, he laid it out. Guys, here's who's going to betray me. It's going to be the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. And I will be killed, and I will rise again in three days. He spoke plainly about this. Now look at this. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. And when Jesus turned and looked at the disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get behind me, Satan. For you do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Stop there. By the way, this is the first time Jesus ever talked specifically, clearly, and I might even add graphically, about the fact that he was going to die. And they're thinking, how could that be part of any plan? You're the Messiah. You're supposed to establish your kingdom here and now. How is this going to be part of something good for you to be taken and murdered. And in fact, we've given up everything to follow you, Jesus. And, and we've made these great sacrifices. And so Peter thought that he would sort of set Jesus straight. And we read in verse 22, Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. And by the way, in the original language, that implies it was done over and over again. I mean, I'm trying to imagine this. Peter says, Jesus... Come here for a second. Buddy, listen. Come on, man. What are you doing? I rebuke you, Jesus. You cannot do this. He's rebuking God Almighty. I mean, this is insane. And Jesus listens to him. And then Jesus says, I rebuke you, Peter. The devil gave you that thought to deter me from this course. I'm going to die on the cross. And there's no getting around this. Now Jesus shall we say, shifts gears. Now he personalizes it. And in effect is saying, look guys, I'm not the only one who's going to bear a cross. You're going to bear a cross too. In fact, you need to bear a cross. And though these words were given some 2,000 years ago, they ring true for us today. These words that we're about to read are not just for first century Christians. They are also for 21st century Christians. Let's go back to Mark chapter 8, verse 34. 
Then he called the crowd to him, along with his disciples, and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for me and the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory. We'll stop there. You could insert your name here. If Greg will take up the cross and follow me, if Josh will take up the cross and follow me, if Mary will take up the cross and follow me, this isn't just for the 12 disciples of Jesus. This is for you. Now you say, but I don't even know what that means to take up the cross and follow him. Well, first he says, deny yourself. The word deny means to say no to yourself. It means to put God's will above your will. What is this cross that we're all called to bear? Well, first let me tell you what it isn't. Because I think we have a lot of misconceptions about the cross today. You know, we adorn our churches with massive crosses. We get into lawsuits about where crosses can be displayed. We, we tat a cross on our arm. We, we make it a fashion accessory. But in the first century, know this, the cross was a repulsive symbol. By the way, the cross was not the symbol of the church in the beginning. Now later it came to be a symbol of the church, but back then, if, if you had a cross, that was a despicable symbol because a cross was an incredibly horrible way to die. It was not invented by the Romans, but shall we say it was perfected by them and the Romans crucified thousands of people and lined Roman streets with them as a warning to not rebel against Rome. Crucifixion was saved for the worst of criminals. So if you were in town getting food for dinner and you saw a man walking by you surrounded by Roman soldiers bearing a cross, you knew this man was going to die a horrible, painful, torturous death. So to even use the picture of a cross was repugnant and repulsive. Now we say, okay, it was a bad thing, so what does it mean? I think we use this phrase, bearing a cross, in ways that are not really biblical. For instance, a mother might say, well, my cross to bear, it's my children. And then the children of that mother say, well, our cross to bear is our mother. Or someone else might say, well, my affliction or this difficulty I have is my cross to bear. You identify whatever issue you have or difficulty you have as your cross to bear. That's not what it means to bear the cross. Listen to this. To bear the cross means one thing. It means deny yourself and put God first. Let me illustrate. I've been a Christian now for 50 years and I've seen a lot of things. I've seen gifted preachers shoot up like rockets and then come crashing down. I've seen people that had their lives changed by Jesus walk away from their faith. I've seen very talented people that I thought would do great things for the kingdom sort of flame out. So as time has passed, I'm not so much impressed by charisma as much as I am impressed by character and longevity. For instance, I'm more impressed with someone who just lives a faithful Christian life. I'm impressed by a husband who keeps his vows to his wife to a lifetime. I am impressed by a wife who stands by her husband through thick and thin. I'm impressed by a Christian who stays with it every day, sunny days and stormy nights. I'm impressed by a believer who weathers the storms of life and continues to give glory to God because that's what following Jesus is all about. As one person defined it, being a Christian is long obedience in the same direction. Long obedience in the same direction. You're listening to A New Beginning with Pastor Greg Laurie, Senior Pastor of Harvest Christian Ministries in the U.S. Well, we're learning about the importance of bearing the cross of Christ as Pastor Greg presents today's message called Lost in Translation. Let's listen. 
Bearing a cross isn't as awful as you might think. Look at the statement of our Lord in verse 25. Whoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Here's what the Lord is effectively saying. If you'll get your priorities in order, if you'll deny yourself and take up the cross, you will find fulfillment in life. Listen, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be happy. And God is really telling you how to be happy. But it's not by chasing happiness. As one person said, the pursuit of happiness is one of the least happy things a person can do. So you don't find happiness by pursuing it. You find it by putting God first in your life and following Him. Here's what you need to know. Selfish people are unhappy people. Now studies have confirmed this. Research has shown this is true. Uh, now you can get a, a momentary burst of what we might call a temporary happiness by doing something selfish. In other words, just catering to yourself. You know, they talk about when people shop, that there's a certain euphoria uh, that they can get of uh, buying something. They call it retail therapy, right? You get sort of a rush. Oh, I got this thing. But then, you know, you get it home and you wear it once and you're not as excited by that thing. And so experts say that basically selfish people are unhappy. One expert said selfish acts bring you happiness, but only in the short term. But selfish happiness fades quickly and then drives you to more selfish behavior. On the other hand, selfless acts bring happiness. You know this from experience. When you've done something for someone else, you put the needs of another person before your own. And after you did that thing, you experience this happiness. And that's really what Jesus is saying. Look, instead of loving yourself and being obsessed with yourself, deny yourself. And if you will lose your life, you will find your life. What does it mean to deny yourself? Let me give some examples. To deny yourself means you're not embarrassed to bow your head and pray over a meal, even around non-believers. To deny yourself means you speak up for your faith even when it's unpopular. To deny yourself means you take up the cross and resist the allure and temptation of this world to live for self and instead you choose to serve others. To deny yourself in marriage is to put the needs of your mate above your own. To deny yourself is to control your impulses as a single person. To deny yourself means you get up every day and you open up the Word of God. I could just go on and on. You say, well, I don't know. That sounds like a miserable life. No, listen to me. This is the happy life. This is the joyful life because you have your priorities in order. And this is why Paul wrote in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Look at the positive outcome that comes when you take up the cross and put Christ first. Verse 35, Jesus says, if you'll seek to save your life, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake and the gospels, you will find it. Listen, as I said earlier, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be happy. God wants you to be happy. He's even described in scripture as the happy God. But go about it in the right way. And don't chase after your desires. Put his will above your own. And as you lose your life, you will find your life by following Jesus Christ. And one day you'll look back on your life and realize it was all worth it. You know, it's interesting how many times Jesus uses the word must in the verses we've read. He said he must be killed. Then he said we must take up the cross and follow him. But none of this makes sense until we come into a relationship with him. So let me share with you one more must. <laughs> Jesus said to Nicodemus, the religious ruler, one night, you must be born again. Let me ask you in closing, are you born again? Some people say, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm just on one of those born agains. Newsflash, you can't be a Christian without being born again. Again, Jesus said, you must be born again. What does it mean? It means to be born from above. It means you'll have a spiritual birth. Listen to this. If you're born once, you'll die twice. But if you're born twice, you'll die once. What does that mean? If you're born once, you'll die twice. So 
You're born physically and then you'll ultimately die physically and spiritually. But if you're born twice, that is born physically and born again spiritually, you'll only die once. Yes, your body will die. But your soul, your spirit will live on. You must be born again. You need Jesus to come and live inside of you. Listen, Jesus came to this earth, as we pointed out, to be born in the manger, to die on the cross for your sins, for my sins, because we're all separated from him and we've all broken his commandments time and time again. And then he rose from the dead and he will give you complete forgiveness. Can you imagine that? Sure, I'm talking to somebody right now that is so ashamed of certain things that they've done and they wonder, could God ever forgive a person like me? And the answer is a resounding yes. Not only can he forgive you, he will forgive you. Right here, right now. You say, well, what do you mean by that? I mean by coming to the Lord in prayer. You can ask for his forgiveness and he will wipe away every sin you've ever committed. He'll forgive it and he'll forget it. Jesus said in John three sixteen. by the way, in that same conversation with Nicodemus, after he said, you must be born again, he said, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Did you hear that? You can have everlasting life. And you can know that you'll go to heaven one day. How do you do that? By asking Jesus to come in to your life. So in a moment, we're gonna pray. And I'm going to extend an invitation to you to ask Jesus into your heart, if you will, into your life to be your Savior and your Lord and your friend. You must be born again. Who do you say Jesus is? You think he's the Lord? Then call out to him right now. If you want your sin forgiven, if you want to know you'll go to heaven when you die, if you want Christ to come into your life, if you want all of your past forgiven, it can happen right now as we pray. If you need Jesus in your life, pray this prayer with me right now. Just pray these words. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, but I know you're the Savior who died on the cross for my sin and rose again from the dead. I turn from my sin now and I choose to follow you from this moment forward as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for hearing this prayer and answering it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Pastor Greg Laurie with an important prayer with those making a change today in their relationship with the Lord. And if you've just joined Pastor Greg in that prayer and you've asked Jesus to be your saviour, we'd like to offer some help as you begin this new journey with the Lord. We'd like to send you a new Believer's Growth Pack. It's the perfect resource for someone who's just come to the Lord. It has special study features to help new believers. Just ask for a new believers growth pack when you call 1-800-PRAY-FOR-ME. That's 1-800-772-936. And the team would love to pray with you too. Call 1-800-772-936 today. Next time on A New Beginning, Pastor Greg leads us into Chapter 9 of Mark's Gospel, where we study the fascinating account of the transfiguration of Christ. Today's message from Pastor Greg Laurie was called Lost in Translation. If you'd like to listen again, just download the free Vision Christian Media app where it's available as a podcast, along with more inspiring Christian content. Just search your app store for Vision Christian Media. Station sponsor. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.